What's up everybody? I'm Hoops and Hip Hop and boy oh boy am I excited for some new Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. I have made several videos over the past several weeks talking about different kinds of new Pokemon I would like to see for these games, but in this video I am going to go ahead and do something a little bit different. Rather than focusing on one group of Pokemon in particular, I have decided today to try and predict what the entire Pokedex of Sword and Shield could potentially look like, and so in today's video, we're gonna do just that. We're going to legitimately try and predict the entire Pokemon Sword and Shield Pokedex. Now, in past videos, I've kind of done a mix of things I think would be cool and things I think would be likely, but in this video, we're going to focus more so on predicting what I think could legitimately happen. Now, it's still kind of a crapshoot because we obviously don't really know much and Game Freak could do anything with these Pokemon, but I'm going to try and predict what I think could actually happen to the best of my ability. And while I don't necessarily have like 90 plus designs to show you guys today, I do have a pretty good sample size because we're going to be looking at all of the different groups of Pokemon that we can expect to see in these games, like the bug of the region or the bird of the region, for instance. And then I'm also going to look at a pretty good sample size of just regular Pokemon that would fit very well in the Gala region, given the context of everything. So without further ado, I think that was a pretty decent explanation. So why don't we go ahead and just take a look at some awesome potential Pokemon and see if we can't predict what might actually happen in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And as always, because I almost always seem to forget this every time, the artists of all the Fakemon designs used in this video will be credited in the description below, so please go check them out because they definitely deserve your support. With all of that being said though, let's go ahead and officially now get into the video. Okay, so to start things off, why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of the very first Pokemon you encounter on any Pokemon journey, and that would of course be the starting bug, mammal, and bird of the region. We get these kinds of Pokemon in every single region, so I don't think Galar is going to be any exception, and for the Galar version of these Pokemon, these are the ones that I think we could potentially see. For the mammal, we've got the red squirrel, which I talked about in a previous video. I think this would make for a really good regional mammal, and this one in particular has a part fire type, which I also think would be a really good fit for a red squirrel and would be really cool to see in this type of Pokemon. You've got the bird, which I think could be based on a falcon or a buzzer, as they're called in the UK. I think that would be a good fit. I also think it would be cool to give it a dynamic typing like this design has in the part electric type. And then we've got the bug, and I think this design I'm showing here is just fantastic. If I remember correctly, I don't think we really have a Pokemon based on a house fly as of now, so it would be really cool to see one like this in Pokemon Sword and Shield, because I think we're at least do one, and it would be perfect as the starting bug of a region, so it's something that I think would be really cool to see. Moving on, we are now going to take a look at the potential evolution of the region, and yes, I do think we are going to see a new evolution in these games. The reason why I say this is because we always get new evolutions outside of Generation 1 in every even-numbered generation, which of course Generation 8 is. And on top of that, we usually always see evolutions introduced in pairs, once again, outside of Generation 1, and Sylveon in Gen 6 was not introduced as a pair, it was introduced on its own, so I feel like it does make sense, especially since Galar and Kalos are probably pretty close to one another geographically, that we have a new evolution in Gen 8 that gets to pair with Sylveon to create one of those pairs that we're so used to seeing. And for that reason, I think we are going to get a Steel-type Evolution because not only are Evolutions introduced in pairs, but they usually are introduced with one type being strong against the other. So a Steel-type Evolution would fit perfectly here since it is strong against Fairy, and Steel in general just seems to fit really well with the Gala region being all industrial and whatnot, so I really feel pretty confident about this specific prediction, and it's one that I would love to see. Next up, why don't we talk about the Pikachu clone of this region? This is another one that I talked about in a dedicated top 5 video, but of course we are going to see a Pikachu clone because we see one every generation, and this one I think is a good representation of what we could most likely see. I really like the garden aesthetic, if you will, that this one has being a part grass type. I think that would fit really well in England, and while it might not be a rabbit because of course we got a rabbit as a starter in Score Bunny, I do 
think some other type of rodent would fit just as well, and I feel like it's just as likely as anything else for this type of Pokemon. Skipping down the Pokedex a ways, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the box art legendaries. Now, in my personal opinion, I do feel like the box art legendaries are going to be those wolves that we see in the logo, just because I don't feel like those wolves would be present in the logo if they didn't represent some type of Pokemon. And these designs do a pretty good job of showing what we could potentially see. Of course, they're both wolves, but they incorporate the elements of swords and shields respectively to kind of differentiate one another, and I think both of these designs look really, really cool, and I feel like we will get something similar in the official game. And since we're talking about legendaries, why don't we go ahead and talk about the mythical Pokemon of this region. Now, I know there can be more than one mythical per region, but I'm talking about the ones along the lines of Celebi, Jirachi, Manaphy, Marshadow, those smaller kind of bite-sized cutesy type of mythical Pokemon that we get every generation. And this one is kind of a two for one because not only does it represent elements that I think could happen for that mythical, but it does also represent elements that I do think could happen for the tree master of the two wolf Pokemon, and that would be the idea of a Pokemon based around wands or magic. The sword and the shield have always been classic counterparts to one another, but when you try to introduce a third element into that mix and make it a trio of sorts, most of the time it seems like that is represented by a wand or some kind of other magical item. And that's why I think either the box art trio master of this region or the cute mythical Pokemon of this region will have some type of magical inspiration, and this design right here does a good job of incorporating both of those elements into one Pokemon, and I think it's something that we're at least decently likely to see one way or the other. Well, since we're talking about legendary Pokemon, we might as well stay on that subject and talk about the legendary trio of this region. In most Pokemon games, you'll have a trio or a group of legendaries that are all very closely related to one another, like the legendary birds or the legendary beasts, for instance. In addition to being related to one another, these type of Pokemon usually always share some type of theme or physical characteristic as well, so these are things we are going to need to consider as we try to predict what could happen for this type of Pokemon in the Galar region. So, just to cut to the chase, I think this is something we could potentially see. I feel like a trio of Pokemon based on the animals that are represented in the Royal Coat of Arms as well as the Flag of Wells is very likely. On the Royal Coat of Arms of the UK, you've got a lion and a unicorn, and on the flag of the country of Wells, you of course have the famous Welsh dragon. And I believe these three animals could come together to create a pretty cool trio of legendary Pokemon, but obviously they don't really resemble each other at all physically, so how exactly would we get around that if they were going to indeed come together to be this region's legendary trio? Well, for the legendary trio of this region, I think it's possible we could see something like this design right here. Also similar to something like the Lake Guardians or even the Island Guardians, for instance, I feel like a fairy type of design that incorporates the elements of these three animals, being the dragon, the lion, and the unicorn, would work really well, because not only would it not be a straightforward representation, which is always a nice way to go for a Pokemon on the creative side of things, but it would also bind them together as well and kind of add for some extra cool bit of inspiration for this type of Pokemon where you've got one that has dragon elements, you've got one that's got lion elements, and you've got one that's got unicorn elements. I feel like this would be a really cool way to do this region's legendary trio because you would have a great inspiration in the royal coat of arms of the UK and the flag of Wells. You would have a cohesiveness in basing them all off of fairies, but then you would have a really cool looking set of Pokemon as well, where they're all fairies, but they incorporate these different elements likely very well because of course it's Game Freak. So this is something that I would really like to see personally, and once again, it's kind of a crapshoot as to whether or not we will, but I think it's a route that Game Freak could definitely take to their advantage. Next up, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the potential fossil Pokemon of this region. Now, this was something that I covered in my last video last Saturday, but since we're predicting the whole Pokedex here, I kind of need to go ahead and highlight it one more time. I do feel like we are going to get some fossil Pokemon in these games, even though we didn't get any in Generation 7, and I do also feel like they will go the route of a more traditional set of dinosaur-based fossils. 
I don't really have a specific reason as to why I think we will see dinosaurs specifically, I just have a good hunch about it, and I do also think they will contrast one another as well, like these two magnificent designs also do. So yeah, that's pretty much my prediction as to what we will see as it pertains to fossils in Sword and Shield. And the last obligatory group of Pokemon that we are going to cover here today is the pseudo-legendary of the region. We obviously get a very powerful pseudo-legendary Pokemon every generation, and in this generation I feel like we could see something that is kind of like a more traditional dragon-esque Pokemon. The reason why I say we'll get a traditional dragon for our pseudo-legendary is because we are in a region based on the UK, and this is kind of where stories of knights and dragons and King Arthur and all of those type of folk tales come from, and so I feel like it would be a really cool way to pay homage to those types of things by having a more traditional dragon-like Pokemon. Obviously, this type of Pokemon would have to be powerful, that's why making it a pseudo-legendary would be such a good fit, and those type of stories are kind of like an icon of the old English, old European culture, so it makes sense to give that type of Pokemon a good role in a Pokemon game like this, and so I think making it a pseudo-legendary would be a great choice as well. However, just so it's not too boring, I think giving it an interesting type to go along with that dragon type, just to kind of give some spice to its design, would be really cool too, and so that's why I've showed this design throughout this segment, because I think a rock dragon would be really cool, and I think this type of design shows how you can have a more traditional dragon-looking Pokemon, while also making it unique at the same time, by giving it a really cool secondary type, so I think this is something that would be really cool to see, in a pseudo-legendary. And now we have arrived at the miscellaneous part of the video. I just covered what is essentially every group of obligatory Pokemon that we can expect to see in these games, and so from here, from a prediction standpoint, it's really a complete toss-up. It's almost impossible to predict, like, accurately what we will see. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys a few Pokemon that would fit very, very well in an England, UK-based region, and hey, maybe we will predict one or two correctly. I've also got a bunch of designs here because I wanted to get a pretty good group together, so we're going to go over them in rapid fire style, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm trying to come across as it pertains to the English aesthetic of Pokemon that I think we could see in these games. First up, we've got a Pokemon based on a potted plant, which I think would work really well for the Gala region just because I always get garden-esque type of vibes whenever I think of England and the UK, so I think something like this would work really well. Next up, we've got the calf baby cow type of Pokemon, which I previously discussed as a potential pre-evolution to Tauros and Miltank in a previous video, but I think even if we don't get that, a baby cow or just a regular cow type of Pokemon would once again work really well in the Gala region. Next up, we've got another Pokemon I have covered in a previous video, and that would be a Pokemon based on a crown, or rather we have a trio of Pokemon that's based on a ring, a necklace, and a crown. I think something like this, for obvious reasons, would fit absolutely seamlessly into the Gala region, and I kinda would be surprised if we didn't see something that was at least somewhat similar. Next up, we've got a Pokemon based on music and sound that I think would fit really well in the Gala region since the UK has so much musical history, both classical and current, I think that would work really well. Next up, we've got a Pokemon based on a Pinwheel, which I think is adorable. I've also talked about how a Pokemon based on a Kite for the Gala region would work really well, but I think this is another really cool way to do that type of Pokemon, and I think this design looks fantastic. Up next, we've got yet another Pokemon that I've covered in a previous video, and that would be one based on an Umbrella. I think it just makes all the sense in the world for the Gala region, both culturally and geographically and it's something that I would really like to see. Once again, we've got another Pokemon up next that I covered in a previous video, and that would be the White Sheet Ghost Pokemon. I previously speculated that it would be awesome to see a normal ghost type that was based on a bed sheet ghost, because that's kind of like a quote-unquote normal regular type of ghost in terms of the media 
and pop culture and things like that. So I think that is another really cool Pokemon that would be awesome to see. Coming up after that though, we've got a really cool bug type that is based around the concept of rust and then more polished metal as it evolves. And I think this would work really well as well because once again, there's the whole industrial theme with Galar. So I think this would fit right in. Moving on, we've got a Pokemon that is a little bit more on the morbid side of things for obvious reasons. And that is because it is a ghost type that is based around the idea of someone being hanged. Now, this might be a little bit too dark for a Pokemon game, but I could also see something like this working well in the Gather region because punishing crimes by hanging people was a popular way to do things in older European culture, so it definitely would reference the history of the place that this region is based on, and so I think it could work well even if it is a little bit dark. On the lighter side of things though, we have a Dust Bunny Bunny Pokemon. This is a design that I covered several years ago in a similar video for Sun and Moon, and I feel like it's not only a fantastic Pokemon design in general, but it would work really well for the Galar region too. And speaking of designs that would work really well in the Galar region, we have these two designs of dog-based Pokemon. Now, I'm not really speaking about these two breeds specifically, but England and the UK do have a lot of really cool dog breeds to pull from that I think would work really well as Pokemon in the Galar region. And these two designs also being fire type do show the potential and creativity that you could have with this sort of Pokemon. Next up, we have got another awesome bird Pokemon, and this one kind of reminds me of that secondary bird type of Pokemon, like Spearow, for instance. So something like this could take that role, and I really like these two designs in particular because they have that posh type of nature that so often gets stereotyped to Britain and to the UK, so it's something that I think would be really cool. Next up, we've got another set of bug types, this time based around bees, and once again, I just think these have that English aesthetic, and I feel like we will get more than just one single line of bug types, so something like this would be awesome too. Moving on, we have got that gargoyle Pokemon that I talked about in my previous video about fossil Pokemon, and even if it does not become a fossil, I think basing a Pokemon on a gargoyle would be fantastic, and I think it could work amazingly well in the Galar region. Next up, we have got a couple of Pokemon based around sharks and piranhas, and the reason why I included these guys is because I feel like it would be really cool to have a Pokemon based on a basking shark. This is another one that I brought up in a previous video, and even though this particular design is not a basking shark, I think this does a good job of showing what we could potentially see if we get this type of Pokemon in the Galar region, and I think it's at least decently likely for us to see it as well. Next up, we have this adorable little guy, and if you couldn't already tell, this is a literal bulldog. It's based on a bulldog, but it also incorporates elements of a regular bull, and I think this is just fantastic, and while it might be a little too specific to expect this to happen from Game Freak themselves, I think it would work perfectly and fit in perfectly to the Galar region. Number one, because it's based on a bulldog, which is a classic English dog breed, but on top of that, it incorporates the bull animal as well, which would be a nice nod to Spain and the running of the bulls, which once again just fits in with the whole European setting and culture, so I think something like this, even though once again it's pretty specific, would be fantastic. Next up, I have the idea of a vampire bat, and while this particular design isn't a vampire bat specifically, it does do a pretty good job of representing how this type of Pokemon could look. We really haven't had a Pokemon based on a vampire, even though we've had a couple based on bats, and I think the Galar region presents a perfect opportunity to do this type of thing, once again, because vampires are a classic staple of European culture, and I feel like referencing different things like this from European culture in different different Pokemon is a great way to go, and I really hope we see it. Moving from European culture to European mythology, we have a Pokemon based on a Hippogriff. And not only would a Hippogriff Pokemon be amazing in and of itself, but it would also once again be a fantastic reference to European mythology and referencing just the roots of that setting as well. But not only that, Hippogriffs were also popularized and made more well known to the public by the Harry Potter franchise as well, which once again is based in England. So I feel like there is a lot of really good reasons reasoning to make a Hippogriff Pokemon, and I would love to see it in Sword and Shield. 
And last, but certainly not least, we have a Pokemon based on a Kelpie. Now I think a Kelpie Pokemon would be amazing because it is a creature based in Scottish mythology, which obviously is part of the Galar region's inspiration, and ironically enough, it also appears in the Harry Potter franchise as well, but overall, I just think this is the perfect type of creature to base a Pokemon on. I think this design right here shows the potential that it has, and it is something that I would absolutely love to see in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And there we have it, everybody. That is my attempt at predicting what we could potentially see out of the Pokedex in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, while I probably won't be making any more of these potential Pokemon type of videos, since I pretty much covered everything else I could cover in this video, it was a lot of fun to kind of just tackle the whole entire Pokedex and look at all of the different things that could make for great Pokemon in these games. If you guys enjoyed the video though, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below which one of them is your favorite and if you think any of these are really likely for Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more new Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And while I won't necessarily be making any more new potential Pokemon videos, I will definitely be covering the official new Pokemon when they're revealed, whenever that decides to happen. And finally, if you like what you see here and you want to support the channel further, consider following me on Spotify and giving some of my Pokemon remixes over there a listen, because that is by far the easiest way to directly support the channel outside of just watching videos, and it does directly support me right here on YouTube, so I can continue to make videos for you guys the way I'm doing now into the future. So if you're doing that right now or you're considering doing it, thank you so much. It is sincerely appreciated. With all of that being said though, I will be back on Thursday for another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live, and with all that being said, you know I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.